Hey, this is Craig, the pool guy with Pool Specialists, and we are here demonstrating on how to rebuild a Polaris 380. This is a workhorse of the pressure side cleaners. It's been around for quite some time. It's probably bang for the buck, the most reliable and best quality cleaner out there. Um, it's relatively easy to rebuild. The parts are readily available. So the first thing that we're gonna do is start taking this part. So there's a little float tube here that you can just pull off, set that to your side. Then you've got a couple screws here that you're going to remove them. And it's nice to have a little container to put all this stuff in so that it doesn't get lost. Once that's off, then this little blue piece comes off and you're gonna take the whole top off by pressing that in and then pulling that off like so. Okay, next, what you've got is we're gonna start taking the wheels off. So these rubber pieces around the wheels are completely shot. This particular customer must run this 24 7 and we're going to go ahead and pop the little hubcap off there's a little c-clamp in there you're going to pop that little c-clamp off with a screwdriver and now we can pop that wheel off same thing on the other side and there we have a bearing. That bearing is bad. It's gonna to have to be replaced. But we'll take care of that later. Pop these off. And you'll see little C-clamps in here. Again, just kind of grab them with a small flat head and you can pull them off. Next, we're going to actually remove the whole bottom. So there's a couple screws. There is a screw right here, which has to get taken out. Then another screw back here. A screw back behind this wheel. And then last but not least, you actually typically have to move this wheel back by loosening this up. And then you can get to the final screw to take the bottom off. Once you have those screws removed, And you'll notice that these screws are all the same size. There's only a couple screws that are different. And so now, we've got the bottom removed. We need to remove the actual flow tube here. So again, three screws. And then this flow tube will actually come off Note that there is an O-ring that goes on the bottom of this flow tube. And it is very important every time you rebuild one of these to replace this O-ring. It stretches out and if it doesn't work, then you lose a lot of your water pressure between this flow tube and where it goes into the water management system. Once you have that flow tube out, now we can take this whole body apart and usually it's a little bit of a struggle where you just kind of have to twist it and move things around because it is a very tight fit then you'll find that your wheels will fall off and 
and your belts. This is your water management system in here. This is your Venturi to turn this little spin wheel that you have. And that's like a paddle wheel on a boat. Um, this water management system sends water to your Venturi, which is in the front, your Venturis that are in the back. And then of course, out to your directional and out to your tail. Check all of the wire ties that are on everything. If you have any broken ones, replace them. If you see any splits in the hose, you're gonna to have to replace those. But in general, you're usually pretty good and don't have to do much with the water management system. Now we're down to actually rebuilding this. You've got a bunch of bearings in here and these bearings sometimes wear out. There's one on each side of the wheel for the wheels on this side, on the far side. And again, we can take these rubber pieces off, toss those, buy new ones. I would recommend replacing all these, especially when you start seeing a bearing that completely came apart like this one, because that means the other ones are close behind it. You have bearings here, and you also have spacers here. Be careful that you don't remove the, you can remove them, but when you put it back together, make sure the spacers are there. And of course, the way you tighten up for the belts is these pieces slide back and forth in order to make the belts tighter and looser. Okay, this is kind of a mess, as you can see. Um, we're going to have to remove this piece, this little clip. And then that little drive wheel will come off. Again, there's a spacer here, so make sure that you keep that spacer and you know to put it back on. Got another clip back here. Right there. And of course, here yet another bearing. That bearing is completely shot. Now your, your gears are ready to fall out. However, you're going to have to take this little clip off, a little clip off over on this side, and then finally the clip right here. At that point, you should be able to remove this little rod. We're gonna need a bunch of new parts for this. Um, we're gonna need all new bearings, so you could actually buy a whole bearing kit. And then we're gonna need a gear train, drive train gear kit. And that comes with all your gears and even new C-clips. Next, we're gonna need a belt drive kit, if you can see we have new inner and outer belts. And then finally, we're gonna want the new O-ring for the feed tube. You're going to find that some of these pieces fit together. So that piece is going to fit in with this piece. And then this has a gear train that is going to fall this way. And as you can see, that gear is going to work with the gear on the outside and then the larger gear is going to work with the gear on the inside. Okay, the bearings, I tend to like to put, there's two sides to it. You can see the bearings, the ball bearings on that side and the blue side goes out. Go ahead and snap those bearings in different spots 
and normally these things will stay in place. Sometimes they don't behave as well. So what you'll find is we want to start with this gear and if you line it up you will see that we have this C-clamp that we have to get into place. So we're going to go ahead and put our C-clamp on because it's way easier to put on out here than once we're in the side there. You may need to take a pair of needle nose pliers. just to snap it on. Sometimes it helps to use a little bit of dish detergent and then you can actually slide this together. Put your bearing in. Put your new C-clamp on. There we go. Put the bearing inside. And now your new C-clamp on there as well. Okay, now you've got that and you can see that spins perfectly. Next we have to give it our water drive wheel in. So again we're going to take a little bit of dish detergent, put it on here because that will lube it up and allow it to slide in just a whole lot easier. Slide this in. We want our water wheel set up. Place, put this in place. We've got our C snap ring in place. Put our bearing back in have a bearing over on this side. If you recall, we have a little spacer that needs to be on this side, so we're going to go ahead and put that spacer back on. And then finally, this is our wheel for the belts. Put our snap ring over here. Then we're going to take our wheel on this side and go ahead and insert that wheel and put our final clip. Okay, now we have that all together. And the most important thing is that you can spin this and it spins nice and freely. You can hear how that's very smooth. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put on the belts. The shorter belt, of course, goes to the rear wheel. And generally speaking, that will go closest to the body. And you'll see there's a little piece in there that separates the inside belt from the outside belt. So go ahead and put that one on. Then new bearing in your wheels on both sides. Don't forget your spacer that goes on the wheel. Once you get that, and put them on the rest of the way. Okay, that's our back tire. That's going to be, that belt is going to be on closest to the body. Okay, we'll have to tighten it up in a little while. Next, we're going to put on our final wheel spacer don't forget that then your bearings you 
master putting on these little C clips and we'll go ahead and thread our belt on so as you can see we've got both the front wheel we're going to have to tighten however um, we can't tighten it until we actually put the device together the back wheel however we can pull that tight simply with your fingers and then once that's tight then you can actually tighten up the screws for this now we're into the home stretch I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together so we come with this part and now we're going to go ahead and finagle this back on and put our screws to hold it together. So one in this rear corner and these are machine screws so they thread pretty nice. Don't tighten it up all the way. One on this back corner. Again, only a couple threads, don't tighten it up all the way. Then your water management, you have to put your cap on over your water management wheel and then thread your screw in to there and you'll find that these screws are all the same size the only screws that are different in length are the screws that actually hold the wheels in place again don't tighten that up and then finally your screw up front that's kind of hidden behind the wheel Go ahead and thread that in. The reason why you don't tighten these up is now we have to put our supply tube in. And if you recall, I told you it was very important for you to replace the O-ring. And that part number is 9-100-5132. Go ahead and put that on the bottom of your supply tube. And now you're going to have to put that in. And this is why you don't tighten it up so that you can actually fit that tube in there. Tighten them. You don't have to make them killer tight. And then now that we're at this point, we're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten down our body. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move that wheel up and we're going to tighten these up. All right, so now if you spin that, you can hear it spins nice and smoothly. It's got all new bearings, it's got all new drive gears, and it is ready to rock and roll it's pretty easy from this point we go ahead and we put our top back on and that is held on by this little blue piece If that little directional piece gets pushed too far in, the screws won't want to thread. You'll have to pull this blue piece off, push it back out, and then start from scratch. This tail piece right here, normally they tell you to put it in about 11 o'clock position. Depending on the pool, you're going to want to rotate this some pools it works better over here but this helps with your direction and helps you from binding up against the sides of the pool we find that actually over in the one slash two clock position is the best don't forget your float that goes on the back and the farther 
out this is, then it's going to force the bottom, the front of it down. So if you don't want it climbing the walls, you pull it back. If you want it climbing the walls, you push it forward. I tend to like to have it climbing the walls. Also, there's something called a tail scrubber and I believe in using the tail scrubbers. This one's completely worn off and have to get replaced. Finally, we're gonna go ahead and put our hubcaps back on. Okay, don't forget to put the new rubber pieces on the wheels. Um, these are actually the wrong color. This, is, this particular one is considered a TR35 and the these tire and it has black tires as you could probably remember from what we took off and these are white tires make sure when you put them you can see how much tighter the new tires are. Make sure they're snapped in all the And there you have it. Our completed Polaris cleaner. It is the same if you talk about a TR35 or a Polaris 380. Um, Leslie's has their own particular number for it and there's three or four different numbers for it but effectively it's all the same cleaner. Um, when you buy the TR35 it has a little bit better warranty. It has to be gotten through a trade professional and they're supposed to come set it up for you so that everything works properly. Um, comes with extra bags and it also comes, comes with a tail scrubber pro. So it is a little bit better unit. It's got some better features with it. Um, I want to do a call out to Jeff Valore, who worked for Polaris when Polaris was Polaris, then moved over to Jandy. Then, of course, Jandy got bought by Zodiac. It was at Zodiac. And now Zodiac got bought, bought by Fluidra, and it's at Fluidra. Jeff was the master of this, and he could probably rebuild this in half the time that I did, um, although he's done thousands and thousands of them. Thank you for watching. Um, if this was educational and useful, please drop us a like. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.